What's up guys, beautiful boys and girls of YouTube? This is Sir All About Music, seemingly back... Seemingly back to a regular schedule. And uh, hopefully, hopefully, we got our fingers crossed on that. But this whole, this whole deal with me uh, losing two weeks of video making, and I'm not gonna be able to do the requests by the end of March like I promised. I promised you guys that. Oh, I promised I would get those requests done by the, the end of this month. Um, but that's just not gonna happen. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to get some of them in on a blog TV somewhere in the new, near future. Um, but this this whole thing uh, has driven me to make a Sir All About Music Facebook page. And uh, right now I'm just going to, the, the link's in the sidebar, or down under me de depending on how you're watching. Um, but this, this is, for right now, just for right now, this is just going to be a communication device between me and you guys. Um, later, I, I am working on some things that I can do with it, um, trying to expand the Sir All About Music thing, make it bigger, make it cooler. Um, so, yeah, if you guys want to, go over there, check it out. It's pretty bare bones. I just, I just put it up last night, so there's not really a lot going on, but, um, I will definitely be using it to, uh, you know, connect with you guys, talk with you guys, and, uh, might throw some little goodie, goodies in there every now and again. You don't know. So, it's all about music fa Facebook page. Go check that out. But the real reason I am here, the real reason I am here is to talk about Pink Floyd's second album, Saucer Full of Secrets, which, until a point, was my favorite Pink Floyd album, and until it was replaced by, you know, the, my favorite Pink Floyd album, but I'm not going to tell you guys until we get to that particular review, but you're free to guess. I mean, go ahead and guess down in the comments below. I love, I love guessing. I love guessing games. So, Saucer Full of Secrets. Saucer Full is a, a, a fantastic album, and the thing that really put, sets it apart from Piper um, is two, two, major, two major things happened. Uh, first of all, Sid Barrett got totally fried on acid. By this point, he's fucking gone. He's totally lost his mind. And they brought in David Gilmore to help Sid out with, you know, his his uh, his band duties. And you, you, we all know the story of, you know, Sid leaves after this, and Gilmore and Waters start to really take control of the band until they start duking it out, you know, epic legal battles and all that shit, you know, whatever. But at this point right now, really, this is, I think this is the, one of the best albums that the classic Pink Floyd lineup ever put out. Uh, that is to say, Gilmore, Waters, Wright, and Mason. It is, it is, it is way darker than Piper, um, way moodier, and it's a lot more experimental. And there are some whimsical elements in here, too. Uh, the, 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 the verse... Right, right now what we're hearing is is the verse of Let There Be More Light. Pretty whimsical. Seesaw, very whimsical song. Extremely whimsical. I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, a lot of, uh, that, the more, the more airy psychedelia in this rather than the harder edge psychedelia that you see and that you hear, rather, in Piper at the Gates of Dawn. Uh, really, the, the addition of Gilmore really doesn't do anything drastic to the sound at this point. Gilmore doesn't have um, the, the 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 influence with the sound that he does on later Floyd albums. He's still very much kind of the session musician, if you will. Uh, sure, his guitar playing, you know, takes some takes some takes some some focal points on the album, but it's not really like you know epic, long, drawn out. Ex, you know, impro virtuosic um, solos. There's not a lot of improvisation going on here. It's still sticking to pretty basic song song structures. Um, they just still have that pop element to them. These aren't you know the the big long ten minute experiments of the later Floyd albums. And I think that's why I'm drawn to this a lot more. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't get old listening to it because and, and, and plus the songs are just because they they stick to a kind of pop structure and they have a pop sensibility to them they're a lot catchier they stick in your head a lot easier um yeah there's just a bunch of bunch of things they're like the the melding of piper and the the experimental side of gilmore and and waters that kind of get fused in this album i think that's what i really like about it 
I really don't have any problems with this album except for one is the band has said, you know, from the time that Sid left to around metal, they didn't have any real sort of direction. And you can kind of see that with Saucerful. You can definitely kind of see that. It's, uh, this, this album sometimes feels like a mixtape. This, I mean, the songs all carry a, 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 a similar atmosphere, and in that way they're cohesive. I mean, by far, they're, they're really cohesive. But the atmosphere isn't the focal point of the album. That's the problem. The album doesn't rely on the atmosphere to be good. It relies on, on the substance of the songs. So the fact that the cohesiveness of the, of the album isn't being carried through the, 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 main, the main focal area of the album kind of gives it a little bit of a shaky flow. That being said, it's not that bad. It's still, you know, like I said, the, the, the mood is, is fairly consistent, and in that way, it's able to bring the album together in a, in a really cool way. So, um, I really don't have a least favorite song on here, but my favorite would probably have to be this one, Remember a Day. And a really ca- another really catchy song, some, some, you know, really cool riffs, some really cool slide guitar going on by David Gilmour, really, really nice vocal melodies, just everything about it just put together is just great. It's fantastic. I really don't have a least favorite um, at all. Um, but some other songs to note are Sauce Full of Secrets, the title track, which is just an 11-minute orgasm of noise and dissonance and everything fucked up. And I mean, that is the essence of the experimental sound of Pink Floyd, which is really cool. So, four points. You guys know. Originality, great. They didn't repeat Piper. Um, they really kind of tried their own thing without Sid, and I think they did a good job. Like I said, this used to be my favorite Floyd album. It isn't anymore. So I do like it though. Uh, the production I think is a little it's a little it's 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 not as it's not as good as Piper. It's a little rougher. That is not I'm not but I'm that being said, the album doesn't suffer from the lower production. It's still a very good album and it doesn't sound like shit. So that's that's production and then the flow. You know, flow's a little shaky but overall is pretty good. So Sauce Full of Secrets for me gets an 8.5 or a 9 somewhere in there uh yeah that's my score because i really like i do like this album i think it's pretty cool and there's some pretty fucked up songs on here and of course jug band blues brilliant fucking gold so that's all i gotta say about saucerful this is sir all about music i love you guys and i'll see you next time